So today we're looking at salamander distribution trunking from Legrand. Oh, the products that make electricians' life easy. I'm going to enjoy this one. Uh, hold on, Gary. I'll just stop you there. Yeah. For the last 19 years when you were teaching students about trunking, did you ever let them near a prefabricated joint? Absolutely not. We made our 90 degrees and we made our tees and I even wouldn't allow them to use the fixings on the lid that to cut the sections out that had no fixings on. Right, but so, what happens in the real world? Well, you go over obviously to your wholesaler, you buy all the prefabricated pieces and you look to make your life easier. I didn't suggest that I was making students' life easier. In the intro, I suggested this makes electricians' life easier. And it does, doesn't it, Gordon? Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of instances where, yeah, you need to get your IP rating right. And what, what, what IP rating do we mainly worry about now for trunking? In this situation here, where we're installing PVC single insulated cables within a trunking system that needs a tool or deliberate action in order to enter it, we can look at the regulations. We can, Gary, that'd be that old favorite 521.10.1. So in this situation, yeah, trunking now has to be IP4X. So we're looking at either, it depends on how you want to phrase it, objects exceeding one millimetre in diameter cannot enter the enclosure, or you reverse the oral process and say objects of one mil and below will enter it, obviously, in order to work out this IP rate. It's really difficult though, especially where lids come together and where we come to these prefabricated bends, tees, etc., isn't it? It is, but that's where this system is really easy. Because I guess, yeah, the easy way to get IP4X is by a system that's designed <laughs> to make compliance with IP 4X easy. Right, okay, so we, let's have a look what we've got here and let's highlight some of those key features that I found make electricians life easier and uh, I would suggest make students that I've taught before life disappointing now, I would suggest. Let's have a look. Here we go. So where would you like to start? Do you want to start with the lid? The lid? Well, yeah. Uh, go on, we'll go with the lid. Well, okay, the lid. So here's the lid. These turnbuckles are brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so they're they're currently positioning so the arrows are both pointing out as if it's in a locked position. So you're gonna yeah. get a screwdriver and turn those around for me? No, I'm just gonna click the lid on. Yeah. Oh, job done. Satisfying. So you'll see in there. And the clever bit is these little springs. Okay, so that springs down onto it. And I take it it's about seven turns in order to get it off, is that right? No, it's just a quarter turn to remove it. A quarter of a turn, and a quarter of a turn, and that lid will come flying off. I like it. There you go. Oh, yeah. I'm so just, do the quarter just, of a turn. I'll You're just gonna do, do it again. again. You're gonna yeah, do it I like again. That. I knew you were gonna do it yeah. again. Yeah, it's satisfying. And so you got them lined up. That's how it comes. As it comes, there's a lid that's arrived. Yeah. And all you're gonna do is just pop them into position now. That's uh, another one. <laughs> he's, he's, gone, he's gone a lid crazy. Okay. Okay. That's that's great. Okay, and then this is this is sometimes an issue, isn't it? This is where we're going to start struggling. Maybe where we're joining lengths of lid, or we're looking for it, say, coming into an actual accessory. What have you got in your hand now? So this is the IP4X cover strip. Okay. So to finish the process. You just click that on. That is it. That's it. So that's now it. that section there, where the lid met this T piece, now hasn't got a gap here, and we've managed to get it up to IP4X. Yeah. Even though you did cut those pretty good, Gary, there's not much of a gap in there. I was like, hoping that people would comment below how well I got those done, because I, yeah, I, I spent some time making sure I got them as close as I can, but what happens then is there's always a little bit of movement, so obviously between the lid and the T and the 90 and all the rest of it, yeah. and once you've left that installation, them gaps do appear however well you cut them, isn't it? Yeah. So that clip, that looked really difficult to fit, wasn't it? That, yeah, that yeah really pop, easy. Pop straight over, and that would be the same if we were using it to join two lengths, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, yeah. Okay, so we've got 50 by 50 mil trunk in here, which is obviously the one I was familiar using up at college. It goes up to 300 by 300 in this range, and you've got every accessory you could probably imagine within that range as well. Yeah, but all the ones you'd expect, even one that you can turn direction on the uh, lid. We need to look at this one. Yeah, this yeah. one's really good. So my trunking lid comes out of this, obviously this 90 degree, and it's facing that way. And then we've got this section here that means I've rotated the lid. Yeah. And they come around here, yeah. You got it in your hand? Have you yeah. got another one? Again, that's a standard accessory. Yeah, and it comes pre-slotted. They're yes. all slotted, aren't they? The trunk in itself and yeah, the accessories so the, are slotted. The trunk in itself, yeah, depending on which accessory you've got. But yeah, the trunk comes with these slots, which means when you actually connect it to uh, one of the uh, brackets. Okay, so bring your slotted end in. Okay, and that's secured into position and you yeah, pulled it so out. Yeah, again, that's easy. 
and then we just tighten those up. Don't even have to take them out, do you? And what is good about these screws? Again, there's another little feature there that saves electricians time. Yeah, so it's that uh, they're all in, so you're not on the. Uh, and they're all backed out, aren't they? So they're all they're backed out, so you don't have to slacken anything. There's a tiny little bit of uh, what looks like Loctite on there. Okay, do you want to take one out for me so I can see that? You're, yeah. you're dead right. So what we're finding is they're not coming in a separate packet made of plastic and they're not coming out and dropping off, are they? So yeah. not so having to hunt the them around for them. Yeah, so it looks like a little bit of Loctite there to hold it in place so it doesn't shake out in transit or shake out when you're trying to uh, try to install them. So you're not going to be, yeah, the old sound of a, of a, a bolt dropping down the ladders or off a scaffolding tower. And it's little features like that, isn't it? The back out screws that don't fall out that actually start to save that electrician's time. We absolutely love the lid, as you've shown it several times there, going on and coming back off again. But what do the regulations say about the lid? Well, 521.10.1, the cover shall only be removed by means of a tool of deliberate action. Mm. It's all those little details that are obviously going to make that installation considerably faster, along with the fact we meet, which IP rating again, just remind me? IP4X. There's going to be a time, however, when you're going to have to start fabricating this. So there might be a time when the lid needs cutting and you perhaps need to put some more turnbuckle clips in, or maybe you've cut a length that no longer has the slotted end on it. So of course that easy fit that you just showed us is a slightly different process. Should we cut to that footage? Let's have footage? a look at that. Okay, so I see you've got the uh, Milwaukee bandsaw out of here, Gary. Yeah, battery powered bandsaw, but if I don't get it straight, I'm sure you're going to call it the Milwaukee. Yeah, well, if you can't use a normal hat, so you're going to struggle with this. But no, it's a nice clean uh, cut edge. We're going to fabricate a custom length of uh, trunking here, so it means we're going to have to uh, add the holes for the end accessories. Yeah, but they've thought of everything because there's a little template to help us do that. Oh, that's good, yeah, so you can just put that on to get the exact drill position. Yeah, nice. Yeah, block of wood in place and obviously you're going to pile it out first before opening it out because it's a lot easier when we've got our slotted ends so this is when we're having to pre-fabricate okay, just clean the end up absolutely what do you think i'm going to do next uh, i think oh, probably a bit of spray paint i should have restored that galvanized end finish yeah so get that into position before obviously now we're going to need to remove the bolts and the strap now on this joining piece and introduce the team. Yeah, so it's the first time we've had to do that, isn't it? And it's only because you're, yeah, you're fabricating this custom end. The rest of the time you don't need to do any of this. No, slots in a treat though, and obviously we're just going to tighten these off. Like so. Yeah, now again, I like the way you can use a screwdriver or a socket to, to tighten those ends off. And there's the example of the socket, so you can see when we've got the slot in it, I'll bring my 8mm socket in and just tighten them off. And we can do anything. What's nice about this then? Oh, and that's that returned edge on there, so it's not going to uh, catch your fingers or potentially damage your cables. Yeah, that is good. And if we were to have to remove these, um, say you were fitting them in a different position within the lid or you wanted more frequent ones, you just easily pop them out of position. So I'll do the pair of them now, I'll show you how you'd prefab them, how you get them into a lid. So now all of a sudden I need some holes in a different position of the lid. I'm going to use the original one as a template. And I'm going to mark that round and then I'll drill out. It's about a 14.1 mil hole. So I'll draw, drill out 14 mil and then just open it out with a pile as I defer it. Let's see that. So yeah, pilot hole. Again, I always find from experience, taking your time at the first hole means you get it in the right position to put these victims shortly out of place. So I've opened it out, I'm just going to defer it. Yeah. And you'll see how easy this is that just way. to put them in. Yeah. And the way they spring into place is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, look how easy it is. Just pop the last one in. And that's some of the prefabrications, also real simple. You're right, Gary, this system is 50% faster to install when fitting end-to-end -end lengths together or to fittings than its previous version, and that's been independently validated by the Building Services Research and Information Association. And obviously, that's a lot quicker because all of the fittings as well have those quick fit and turn buckles on them as well. Yeah, look at that. It just clicks lovely into position. The T next. Clips down like so. Yeah, wonderful. Well, that almost took me back to my college days because obviously I did the prefabrication at that stage. What do you want to do now? It looks yeah. like you're a screwdriver now. You're going to take that well, off I'll again. Just take you? that cover lid off again. That's again. Just look at that return edge on the top there. Yeah. So that's the, that's a key bit. Doesn't hurt your fingers, and is not going to damage your cables as well. And yeah, I like the template as well. Again, that's just a neat little thing. Bring it to place. Put your mounting holes in the place. It seems too long to me. So why is it so long? Well, that's for up to the. 
300 by 300, Gary. So yeah, you could practically sleep in a trunk and it's that big. <laughs> ah, thanks for that. So yeah, that's, yeah, that slots on the end and we saw it in the video, didn't we? Yeah. That they've made even the actual fabrication process easier by giving you things like that template or, or Just something. Just that lid on again. Oh. But as always here at eFix, we're interested in your feedback and even more so on this because we're having this trunk in fitted in our uh, studios in the next couple of weeks, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. Passing over our Tim Electrician, Eddie. Oh, sorry. See how he gets on with it. But uh, yeah, well, he was the one who suggested we take a look at the salamander trunking in the first place. He did. So we're not only, we've had a quick review of it here, we're also going to look at some other trunking in the range as well in another video, aren't we? We have. So this is IP4X. Yes. Legrand also do an IP55 rated metal trunking that we haven't seen before, but we'll look at in the next video. Okay, and hopefully then we'll see some footage of when Eddie fitted it as well, because there's nothing better, is it, than seeing the electrician and asking him how he feels about this style of trunking. We think it's fantastic. We think it will make electricians' life easier, and we love that EE fix, even though college students have to do it the hard way. Agreed? Your feedback's really important to us. Are you currently fitting this trunking from Legrand? Okay, if you are and you love it, or there's a real gem in there, within their range that we haven't mentioned and you want to share it with the community, please leave that in the comments below and we'll try and get back to as many as we can.